Good evening everybody and once again welcome to the video. This is going to be part number 8 of AWS step function. Uh, this is in continuation with my playlist that I've been doing on step function. Here in this video we are going to develop a very simple red yes yet sorry robust pipeline for Elasticsearch. So the goal is to use AWS step function right and uh, essentially the step function is going to process the data and then it's going to dump on Firehose. And the Firehose essentially, you know, dumps data to the Elasticsearch. So let me show you what the pipeline looks like. Uh, it's a serverless, uh, completely serverless, right? So as you can see here, we are about to develop this stuff right here. So, you know, given JSON data, it's gonna process in parallel. And if anything fails, you publish the dead letter. Uh, you can also publish to SNS, get uh, email alerts, etc., uh, etc., etc. Et and um, as you can see, real time, all the data comes to Elasticsearch, right? Um, pretty amazing, right? So let's get started with the video. All right. The first and foremost, you need open search or elastic search, whatever you like, do that, okay? The next thing that you want to do is come to delivery stream, click on here and click on direct put and the destination could be open search, okay? So now, uh, come on. All right. So that's done. You name the pipeline. Once you name the pipeline, click on browse, select your elastic search give it a beautiful name for the index, uh, then set up your buffer interval based on whatever needs you want, right? Then uh, all the failed messages can go to the data lake. So I'll select the data lake, select the prefix path, okay? And then click on create delivery stream. So your delivery stream is ready at this point. Now we need to develop the step function. So let's see, uh, or let's take a look at the step function. Uh, step function is very easy. There's nothing complicated. So here I defined a for loop. Remember this is, uh, I'm simulating that there, this is fetching some data from some third party or it's receiving data through API gateway or whatever it is. And essentially it's gonna process the data and send it to the Firehose. Over here I use the type as map and here uh, I'll try my best to show you the JSON data so things can make sense. So input path is $.detail which means this entire JSON go, dollar means access, this particular part, so I'm gonna access that, right? Dollar dot detail. Item path is dollar dot chip, which means inside that dollar dot detail, I'm saying that a dollar dot chip, so it's gonna go array of objects, right? It's gonna access array of objects. Max concurrency, you can set it to 1000, 200, 500, whatever you need, right? Uh, iterator, here is my iterator that, that's gonna do most of the job. So process JSON file and push the data to the Firehose, that is Elasticsearch. So I define the state. I define as task, here is my lambda function. I define my catch if something goes wrong, push the message to the dead letter queue, okay? So I define my catch block, I define my retry. So if anything fails, try for two times and back off. Of, so essentially it's gonna try after 30 seconds and it's gonna increase the back off time by two seconds. So first time it's gonna be 30, next time it's gonna be 32, etc., etc., etc. And that's true because this is my end. If anything fails, the catch block will essentially branch my uh, branch to this set that uh, that is nothing but publish the failed events to dead letter queue. All right, so now uh, you can come here, you can click on edit state machine, uh, copy your JSON, dump your JSON here, click on save, save anyways. Oops, looks like, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, this is my state machine, not here. So my bad, so we'll copy the state machine. Yeah, we'll copy the state machine. Uh, let's see, all right, let's 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 click on save. Click on save anyways, right? Start execution, then we'll pass in the JSON data to the step. And as you can see now, it's processing all the data in parallel, right? I can take a look at the input or I can see the specific step, right? This is the input and this is the output. This is the output essentially because my Lambda function is essentially processing and then dumping it into the firewall. So let's take a look at Lambda, very, very easy code. And don't worry, this access key, I know it's gonna, no, not this one, it's gonna be this one. I know that the access key has to be an environment variable, but I'm just teaching you guys, okay? Uh, these keys are gonna be deleted after the video, so not to worry at all. Okay, assuming that's that, then I create an instance of a class firehose, then I say helper.push items, right? So I, I do some processing here, uh, you know, I'm simulating, I'm just adding a daytime object, but think about it. You could essentially convert into a vector or whatever transformation you wanna do, you could do that in the Lambda function. 
and then I'm essentially dumping it to the fire hose. So if you take a look at the fire hose class, very easy, all it has a constructor takes access, secret and region. I create a private variable called client object and then in the method I essentially invoke uh, the put record behind the scenes. That's that's all right. And um, if you now see Elasticsearch, as you can see, I have all my data here in my Elasticsearch. So I can fire as many time as you want and this will easily scale up, right? As you can see, I fire up, my pipeline starts now, this also gives me the flexibility to increase the concurrency, right? So I have set it to two, you could set it to 100, 200, 500, 1000, depending upon how much uh, concurrency your account has. Then as a good practice, if you think that this Lambda needs to be a mission critical stuff, you could set up provisional concurrency, which means your Lambda would be in a hot state. Remember, provisional concurrency comes at a cost. It is not at all free. The beautiful part about the step function is see, automatically it can orchestrate all the events, right? If something fails, automatically it will dump, dump to a dead letter queue. So now simulating an event that something failed here. Purposely, let's say I am purposely gonna fail this uh, uh, pipeline. Whatever that is, error, right? coming to my state machine, firing up again. Now you'll see that this is gonna fail, okay? But remember, it's gonna retry. So I might have to wait and I might have to be patient here because I have a retry logic. So uh, before that, you can see the queue has SQS has zero messages, right? But so now, as you can see, right, it's gonna try for, uh, I, I should have removed the retry. It's gonna take a long time now. But yeah, it's gonna try for this and then it's gonna try two more times and even after that, the pipeline fails. All the messages will then land into a dead letter queue, okay? So what you are observing here is see how beautifully and easily you can define your pipelines, you can orchestrate workflows, right? Using step function, retry, error handling, everything makes it easy. Step function makes things very, very easy, which is why you wanna learn, right? I'll leave the source code in the description section below. So if you are a, a newbie and a beginner, I'll come back to the console in a second because I have a retry. So if you are a newbie and if you are a beginner, I have eight tutorials on my step function series. So if you don't know anything, I think you can really learn here, right? So uh, right from essentially, yeah, from part one, right from theory, a simple hello world, retry, catch, then branching, choice operator, batch operation, and now essentially we're doing um, kinesis and other stuff, right? What I'm trying to show you is that things are easy if you spend the time and learn it, right? That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah, this is gonna take a time, so we tr we'll try to be patient. Uh, remember, I added 30 seconds, oh, finally. I thought it's gonna take forever. So now, as you can see, it caught the error. Uh, might have to zoom in, otherwise you will be like, uh, yeah, so it zoomed in, and here if you see, God damn it. Uh, so if you, it's a little hard because of my screen resolution, uh, come here. All right, so now uh, if you observe that it, it dumped the message to my SQS and if I head over to my SQS right now, I should see all the messages in my dead letter. So as you can see, my DLQ here, right here, uh, I, I can poll for message and I can see that, right? So poll for message and here you can see, here are my messages in the dead letter queue. So what you see that how easily in a short amount of time, uh, let me switch my webcam, hopefully. Testing, oh, that's taking a long time. All right, so what you observe that how easily we can create uh, pipelines for Elasticsearch or orchestrate any workflow using step function. Step function allows us the flexibility to chain Lambda function and create complex workflows. Uh, you're, you're not limited to just Lambda function, you can create very complex ETL pipeline also using, you can fire up a glue job. Uh, you could do much, much more using step function, right? What I'm doing here is just touching the tip of the iceberg. Uh, I'm trying to show you some examples of, oh, as well. So now I showed you Elasticsearch example. I'll show you some ETL example as well using step function. Very powerful. If you get some time, try to spend some time and learn about step, step function because I believe that's gonna benefit you. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling, keep programming. All the material code are in the description. So check it out, spend some time, learn it. If uh, you have any questions, try to post your question in the comments. And by the way, I get so many questions and comments 
it's literally impossible for me to reply to everyone but i try my best to get in touch with people and help them out as and when i have free time all right with that being said thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the upcoming next tutorial series on step function